Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com, another great presentation today. We're going to teach you an important topic. What is it? Barrett's esophagus, okay? And we're going to do this under nine minutes. So only the important facts, make sure you keep on watching the video. So repetition is the key, my friends, so we can remember for a long time. There's no point, again, you know, watching like an hour long video. Um, and then you don't have the time to review it. That's why we're making like all of our presentation under nine minutes. So let's watch it, okay? So let's go. Barrett's esophagus, again, my name is Pramil Charyat. I'm a program director, internal medicine residency program, transitional residency program. I teach medical students and residents on a uh, regular basis. I'm also a director of research, assistant professor of medicine, two major medical schools. Let's get into our topic. So <clears throat> Barrett's esophagus, as we know, is one of the deadliest complications of like heartburn or gastroesophageal reflux disease, okay? Two things you need to know. <clears throat> the cell type, that's the most important thing. Usually, like what happens is like, um, you know, you got this metaplastic columnar epithelium, which replaces the stratified squamous epithelium that normally lines the distal esophagus, okay? So if you have to remember something, always remember that stratified squamous epithelium as a normal thing, is gone, <laughs> new body coming in, which is called a metaplastic columnar epithelium, that's one then you said about metaplastic remember malignancy okay incidence 15 percent of gastroesophageal reflux disease very scary right 15 percent in the united states as many as 5.6 percent of the adults have bad esophagus very very scary i don't think a lot of people don't know that that's why it's important to get a EGD2. <clears throat> now let's look at the risk factors of esophageal, I mean, for um, bad esophagus, he got like, um, again, everybody know, heartburn or gastroesophageal reflux disease, right? And then he got um, central or abdominal obesity, he got family history, smoking is a very, very important, male ethnicity, white and age greater than 50, okay? So <clears throat> you can um, become cancer, that is the main concern. So when you look at the pathophysiology, like let's look into what actually happened. Everybody know this acid, stomach acid, right? That damages the mucosa of the distal esophagus. <clears throat> Just like we said before, usually like squamous epithelium, boom, they're gone. And who comes in? A new guest come in, which is columnar epithelium and the goblet cells. So you get intestinal metaplasia, you got also called Barrett's metaplasia, okay? So there's this physiological transformation zone or Z-line that's between the squamous and the collus epithelium is shifting also upward. You got some nice picture there for you to take a look at it. So there's another term you have to know, the short segment and the long segment. What is a short segment? It's like, you know, when you have less than three centimeter of columnar epithelium between Z-line and the gastroesophageal junction, then you can say it's a short segment. Now, we should worry about what called long segment, which is greater than three centimeter columnar epithelium between C-line and gastroesophageal uh, uh, junction, higher cancer risk, okay? So you got a nice picture again from the long segment and the short segment. Again, long segment, very, very high risk for cancer. So clinical features, you got like, the, I mean, if you have to take something out of what is the clinical feature, usually asymptomatic, okay? That is also the scary thing. Then also, like, you can have initial symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease. You can have heartburn, regurgitation. <clears throat> Sometimes it could be dysphagia or dinophagia. And rarely you can have, like, gastrointestinal bleeding, but it's a very rare complication. So what is the first thing you have to do to diagnose this? You have to do, like, upper endoscopy. You got, like, sensitivity and specificity. Like, everything we do, we want to bring the evidence base. So what's the sensitivity and specificity, my friend? 82% sensitivity and specificity of 81%. And then there is some known endoscopic method, right? The method they use called a capsule sponge combined with an immunohistochemical biomarker can also um, use to diagnosis. So the diagnosis established by upper endoscopy and biopsy. So criteria, what's the criteria for bladder esophagus? Um, columnar epithelial lining greater than one centimeter of distal esophagus. Histological examination of biopsy specimen from that columnar epithelium must reveal intestinal metaplasia characterized with the goblet cells, okay? How do you manage it? Main thing you have to manage the acid reflux. What do you, how do you manage acid reflux? Everybody know prothrombin inhibitor, right? <clears throat> that is the most uh, um, commonly used treatment. Then you can do endoscopic surveillance with the four quadrant biopsies every two centimeter of the suspicious area, which is usually salmon colored mucosa. So this thing also we need to know, the endoscopy. And do you 
repeat endoscopy. Let's say if there's no dysplasia, you repeat endoscopy every three to five years, okay? If indefinite for dysplasia, you do repeat endoscopy with the biopsy of three to six months of on after optimizing PPI therapy. If it is low-grade dysplasia, then endoscopy therapy of the mucosal irregularities alternatively you got surveillance every six to 12 months with the biopsies of every one centimeter, okay? Then you got high-grade dysplasia, you got the endoscopic treatment of the mucosal irregularities, like we can do radiofrequency ablation, you can have, I mean, of course, anti-reflex surgery, and also the resection based on the recommendation or uh, after the evaluation. Okay, so those are the treatment options you have. This is when you do the, um, it's important to know, when do you have to repeat? There's no dysplasia, you can do three to five years, but if there is dysplasia, if the high grade dysplasia, you can even consider resection. So complications, what's the complications? Again, cancer, which is esophageal adenocarcinoma, which can cause scripture, okay? Now, thank you so much for watching. Um, please subscribe to our channel. We'll be back with another presentation. Um, thank you again.